Hello everyone, welcome back to another web scraping tutorial with me Aina. In today's video, we're going to learn on how to scrape the data from Google Flight. So this is the Google Flight website and you can find all these detailed tutorial here inside the certified community blog post where I'll be sharing the link in the description below. So as you can see here is the Google Flight. Let's create for example here. Let's do some search and I'm going to do it for one way for this tutorial and let's click on random dates and then click on search so as you can see here this is all the airlines that are available so the data that we're going to scrape are this departure time the arrival time the flight duration the stop if it's available so here is non stop and you can see here it is consists of one stop and then this carbon emissions and then the difference the variation of the carbon emission and lastly we're going to get the prices as well so this is the data uh, you can go you can go to this repos for the for the code so this is the data that that i collect before so as you can see here we have 54 data as you may know google flights is a dynamic website which means scraping using just beautiful soap is not sufficient therefore we need to use some browser automation for this case i'm using playwright the reason I'm using Playwright is because it supports these asynchronous capabilities. Therefore, it can make the scraping faster. And the first thing, the first thing before we get started, you need to make sure that you already have Python installed inside your local machine and have a little bit of knowledge of Python. So the packages that we're going to install is pip install Playwright and async io, and then you run this code, Playwright install. So it will install Playwright inside your local machine. So you just copy, copy this code and open up your terminal and paste it. So here I already have the code, which is the same code that are available inside these repos. So this is my code here. So the way that we're going to scrape, we just need to, uh, we just need to modify this value. For example, here I have flight uh, depart from San Francisco to LAX on 5th of December on sorry on 25th of december so let's try to let's say from lax to somewhere else for uh lhr for london Heathrow. so for this code to go running properly you kind of need to know the airport code and then so let's try to run this code um, So you can see here, it got this URL and it's opened up this browser. And then let's wait a bit for it to load. So you can see here, it's running automatically. And then, so you can see here it's from LAX to LHR on 25th of December. Okay, now it's available here. So you can see this is all the flight information that are appear on that page. So the first thing that we need to do is, so I have these two codes here, which the first one is without using the proxy, and then the second one is using the proxy. So this is work as like that as well. So the first thing you need to do is import this, import the import the desired library. So we're using SNIO, we're using CSV because we'll be we will be saving all the information inside a csv format and base 66 64 is because we're going to decode this url for as you can see here if we go to search and the google flight is going to return to us this encode url here so therefore we need to i did decode this url so example here let's copy this one and then so you can find this decode url so this this is not needed inside our inside our scraper but i just show you here because 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 you need to know where this this thing came from so if we run this code sorry so you can see here this thing this here and then SFO, LAX also, this, this is the previous one. So you can see this is the same thing here. 
here and then this this date which means it will get this date from from here and then the destination which is this encode part and then and then we're going to get sorry this is for the departure until here and then we get until here to to this LAX so this is the destination and then this is just the parameters I assume is just to tell the to tell it for one way one way flight so after that we're going to include this because after we run this code uh, it's just written it's just gonna return to us It's just return to us this value so therefore we need to add this underscore which is here until the sixth location so that's why I do minus six and then we're going to add underscore before that part so if you copy this value you can open up and yep it's open these things this is the January 12th yep so here you can see it's January 12th Okay, so that was the URL part. So the way why I'm choosing to do this way is because you can still do the open up the browser and then click on the location, but it can cost you time since Google Flight is very dynamically loaded. So it will cost you a lot of time. Therefore, I'm opt for this, this method. And then after you get that, after you get that, so here is the browser setup, and then this is how you're gonna script the elements, which we'll be using query selector and find for the area label if it's available. If not, we're just gonna use selector. So here, if we go back to our to our Google Flight pages and click on inspect here. So for this departure part. I'm going to so here you can see it got spent with the area label departure time so so here we're going to get the spend and departure time so for this part we go the way that we're going to do is we're going to pass this inside this function which means the selector is the span and then the area label is this departure time because here we're going to get selected and area label which which you can see here i put optional because some some of the cases it don't have the area label for example here the airline names and let's go back and click on this arrow icon and then this this one it don't have any area label so that's why we're going to use this class function inside this div element div div tag so yeah i'm going to open up this way so that you can see it side by side and where, where is that so here is the airline so it's inside this class name this as 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 hqwe and same goes to other part as well so this part is very straightforward where you just find the selector and then you will save you will return this inside its value and then sometimes it just have some some anomalies like some very special character that are appear so this is the character that i i'm able to identify which means before we save we need to clean the value so this is how we clean the value we're going to get this item from here and then we just use the replace method to replace the other unwanted characters and then finally we're going to save the information inside the csv format so you can change here the flight the the the, the name it's up to you so you can see here let's say flight data 02 and then and then this is how this is the the main function where we're going to create a, an empty array which we're going to open up this browser so this here we'll call this browser setup which is this and then we're going to go to 
we're going to go to the URL. So this URL, so this URL, if we get this URL from here, because here you can see one way URL, so it called here one way URL, which means we refer to this part, and then it will run this block of codes. And then after that, we're going to, we do, and then we're going to, for it to wait until it find this selector. Because, so if we go back to this, if we hover over here, all this information are available inside this class name. So this li tag with, it, with this class name. So, so we're going to wait until this class name appears and then, and then we're going to scrape the info. And then, because this is like the li, so we're going to look into it and then scrape the flight info, which is this part. So we call this part of URL and that's it after it got scraped the data it will save it will call this function to save this url which means which means yeah it saved this here and finally it will close the browser so here let's try running this scraper without these without the proxy so let's change to here it's okay LAX. so let's change to jfk for example and now let's run this scraper. Okay, so it's opening up the browser. So if you notice here, it's appear in MYR as I'm currently based in Malaysia. That's why it appear as Malaysian Ringgit instead of USD. Okay, so you can see here it created a new CSV file with all the information here. So if you notice here, it's appear in MYR. And then this one is the proxy, it's just appear in USD. So uh, for you, in order for you, like for example, you're going to do in larger scale, it's really recommended for you to use some proxy so that you're just not going to get it blocked any, anytime soon. And the way if you want to setting up the proxy, uh, so for this tutorial, I'm using the proxy from Ryobi itself where it's up for is get where you can get 50 megabyte of trial which is enough for this tutorial and so here this is the same as before so i added a new class that name proxy configuration where you need to have dot env file which means you need to have you need to save your proxy credential here and then this is how it called the proxies and that's it other parts are also the same thing just the setting up the browser is a bit different than before because we need to call the proxy here so for if you want to make it like running faster you can change the headless to true it will not open it will not open up the browser So here is the URL and we for a few seconds. And here we have it. So is this running like before? So I believe that's it from me and if you have any question or anything happen you can you can write down inside the comment I will be respond to you as soon as possible and yep that's it from me and I'll see you guys next time bye bye